granddaughter. The water can hear you. The water has memory. blood of our mother the earth water is the lifeblood of our own body to pass on the knowledge that needs to be given unto the other generations. You are the keeper of the water. the change in this life condition that we're in, that great-grandchildren will stand up to, to this truth of what life is about and, and to live it in such an honorable way, the way ancestors came, came to this earth. Each day when the sun rises, no matter how bad the day before might have been, there's a new chance for your hopes and dreams. And I say, Chimigwech, thank you for singing the water song. Nibi wabo and again, aki misqui, nibi wabo. Hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, hey, hey ya, hey ya, hey ya, ho. Thank you, grandmothers. This is such a moving a meditation and song, and uh, it became sort of a symbol of our year of water as well. Uh, my name is Violeta Bultz, and uh, I will be moderating today's event and holding space that everything goes well and whatever happens is right. Uh, so allow me first that I just share a couple of thoughts uh, that you uh, get a feel, the framework for what was happening in this year of water. And then, of course, I will invite the co-creators to share 
their reflections to the sessions that they were hosting. Uh, I dropped all the agenda in the chat, um, but so I will proceed with this very joyful slide. These are all the events that we've been hosting, and I'm so happy that all of them have been completed successfully. Uh, and each of them was really inspiring and gave us an incredible in-depth into the uh, challenges, opportunities, uh, and incredible energy of water. So uh, this year of water happened uh, in a very close collaboration of four of us ladies who you see on the screen. Uh, and uh, they represent really uh, different generations. They represent different parts of the world and they represent a, a very unique individual and collective inputs into this, uh, into this uh, year of water. So uh, the core companies are eco-civilization uh, movement, uh, Wach Woman and the Myanmar Water uh, Institute. And Yuko as an artist has been, she's been inspiring us in many different sessions uh, so far. The great thing is that they're all very active also as eco-civilization members being either uh, country chairs or curators and uh, co-creators of the movement. And let's see what has eco-civilization evolved to. First of all, we can now say very clearly that eco-civilization movement is a mission-driven disruptive cluster. Cluster of individuals and uh, especially inspiring outstanding women and men. Uh, the exuberant minds from all over the world who are committed to human wealth and reinvent the future for humanity with the support of engaging planet Earth, as well as with the magical strength of water. The movement holds a safe space for those that co-create and deliver the charter of eco-civilization. It's ever evolving. So you have a chance to, if you decide to join us. We're invited to do what it feels right to sustain the planet as an eco-zone of our galaxy, which uh, inclusion and diversity, with inclusion and diversity at its core, enabling a universal knowledge and wisdom to develop endless ecosystems of collaboration, uplifting economies and societies based on the law of laws of nature and the frequency of love. With that in mind, I would like to use this opportunity at the beginning to thank to all who co-created our events on a local and global level. Thank you to all who expanded our understandings of the essence of water and are acting as invisible ambassadors of water, knowing that it is the right thing to do so. And who responded to our invitation and paved the way for a new water paradigm. Thank you all. Today is about the learnings, the experience to feel the essence of the new water paradigm. And you will see and uh, hear about many topics that emerged in this year of water, from the role of art, about investment, spirituality, empowerment, rituals, risk management, diplomacy, circular economy and circular systems, conservation, legal rights, management, and I hope a flow of friendship. This is so important for all of us that we understand how important water is in our lives. And here I would like to express and extend my invitation to adopt, reinvent, and engage even more actively. Why is that so important? We live in a time of transformative change on the level of entire humanity and the planet Earth. The time of Holocene is ending and the time of Anthropocene is evolving with, with an accelerating speed. For the Holocene, which has 
lasted about 12,000 years, the key characteristics were stability of climate, stability of weather, predictable water levels and water availability, and burst of biodiversity. These kind of conditions also enabled humans to evolve and many civilizations to flourish. In the Anthropocene, the nature, natural cycles of Earth are facing a very strong intervention by the evolved humanity. Our negative impact on climate and weather in the form of pollution, excessive use of resources and devastation of natural ecosystems that are essential for self-regeneration of the planet are also challenging our own capacity to adjust. And in the middle of all these dynamics is water, a being that enables life on our planet. A closed system of many faces and still many unresolved mysteries. To be able to prepare well for the emerging changes, we are invited to engage with nature directly to engage with each other directly, develop resilience and possibly find a way to coexist with the planet through its transformative cycles. It is estimated that the planet has undergone five big resets already, during which up to 90% of all biodiversity was gone for a longer period of time and many have never recovered. So yes, gatherings like this one today are important in building the awareness, capacity of understanding and capacities to engage and deliver changes needed for our resilience and sustainable coexistence. We will hear important summaries of our discussions in the year of water. We will introduce some new projects for 2024. And I'm inviting you already to share in the chat your thoughts about additional topics on how our flow can be even stronger and how we can make it even more impactful. With this invitation, I would also like to just make a little connection to a very important event that is happening right now. Uh, in uh, in golf, COP28. And in COP28, there will be a lot of discussions about water too. My biggest question is, do we have what is needed to address them? And my answer to this is yes. Bigger the collective awareness and collective engagement, more chance that we will find the sustainable responses and actions that we can follow together. What are the topics that are being put forward on this COP28 that are directly related to what we're gonna be discussing today? First, net zero requires massive transformation. Now, can you imagine this without reliable access to fresh water? Next one, climate adaptation and mitigation can on my opinion, this can only be effective by managing source to sea water cycles. Holistic approaches need simultaneously addressing sustainable development, disaster risk reduction, environmental protection, and biodiversity targets. And that's exactly where water sits, right at the middle. Climate change is one of the most significant drivers of growing poverty and inequality. So it's even more important that we focus on universal access to clean water and safety manage, uh, manage sanitation, improved water and sanitation management and governance systems. And last but not least, nature-based solutions and promise for reducing climate change impact. And here again, water is all around us in the nature and is offering itself a hand to be used and included in our decision-making processes and actions. So let the flow begin. And I'm passing the torch down to my dear friend, Hugo, who will bring a vibe of art in today's session. 
Yuko, the floor is yours. Wonderful. Thank you, Violetta. Uh, and welcome everyone for being here with us today. I will start by, nope, not that. <laughs> Technical does they always happen. But I will start by sharing my screen. Okay, awesome. So I will start by sharing this piece. It's actually a direct result of what we have been doing. And some of us who are in the room to, right now have actually contributed. And I'll talk a little bit more about this after this. Okay. Let me start over. Water. Vada. Nero. Magic. P. G. Low. Nizu. Water. My. Pani. Aqua. Guha. Ishka. Too big. Great. Thank you, everyone, for seeing this. And going to that. So that piece was a direct result of what we were doing. So collaboration by one of the civilization sister, Deidre McMillan, and the music is contributed by myself. And all the voices were different water in different languages it just symbolizes how we have a different relationship to water how we see and relate to water from a different perspective different culture and different vision and essence that we've been talking about and we are able to talk about water today and it's such a beautiful moment that we get to discover and see what is possible together and as an artist today, I will be sharing a little bit more about how can artists collaborate in this movement? How can people collaborate? How can we as a cross collaboration can be more made? So collaboration is, we've been talking about and connection and water itself is the example of that. It's not a single drop collection of water is what makes us strong. So we'll be doing that. So if you notice that your water in your language was missing from that piece we just shared, like let me know or send me a recording of what water it means in your language or what water sound like in your language, in your dialect. In and we'll love to add more and keep exploring our different variety relationship, different essence, and uh, different artistic expression, and how we can be sustainable and resilient together. So I would love to keep cre creating that with you. And together, we can make so much more changes. And I will pass it to Elefatelia for guiding us in some beautiful meditation. Thank you so much, Yuku, for that beautiful compilation of all the different languages of water. Um, I would now like to invite us into a very short meditation to really connect with the energy of water. And uh, we'll be practicing a Jungian technique called active imagination. And so I want to invite you to really connect with that innocent child that is still within you that has got an active imagination. And so 
I'm going to ask you or invite you to just close your eyes for a moment. And just soften your awareness, turning your gaze inwards. Just connecting with the breath and the body. And for a moment, just explore your inner world, the body of water that exists within this vehicle, this body you move through in life. allowing each heartbeat and each breath to just take you to a deeper and quieter place. We all come from water and in the womb, in the nurturing the water of our mother's wounds, it's the first sound we hear is her heartbeat. This is a collective experience we all have as our beginning. Water is our connector. She gives life and she receives life. For a moment, we invite you to explore your whole body as a flow of water and scanning your body from the top of your head all the way down to the tips of your toes. Using your imagination, observe if there are any constrictions or blockages, stopping the flow of water or life energy for you. You may find something around the throat area, perhaps in the solar plexus, or around the knees. And with loving kindness, can you transform a free flow, the circulation of water through your body. Perhaps in times of overwhelm, is there too much water, too much emotion, too much overwhelm? And again, with loving kindness, can you create a boundary or realign your central nervous system to ground 
the energy for a balanced flow. And bringing the intention of the life giving water back into the heart center. Can you connect with a still, peaceful pool of water that lives and resides and regenerates within you? For a moment, and you remember joyful pleasure of playing at the riverside in a body of water at the seaside. The joy that you perhaps experienced as a child. Noticing the waters flowing and changing colors, coolness on your skin, or perhaps the warmth of your skin in a warm spring. From that place of joy, let us give gratitude to water. And we take a deep, grounding breath in, bringing back our awareness, back into this moment, this time, this place, knowing we're all connected through water to one another, to life, grounded in that peaceful, Full pool of water within. Gently start becoming aware of the weight of your body on the chair that you're sitting on. Become aware of the clothes on your body. The gentle in and out breath. Your heartbeat. The sensation of your fingers, wiggling your fingers, wiggling your toes, bringing your hands together, rubbing your hands together, placing them over your eyes. And when you are ready, you release your hands and just see through the eyes, flowing, fluid, life-giving, love and water.
And I now hand over to Rajni. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eleftheria. And that was so calming and love soothing that I had a bit of <clears throat> anxiety before the session. And now I was feeling so relaxed that I didn't feel like opening my eyes, but I knew that I have to hold this session and I have to carry on this session. So thank you so much for this wonderful, incredible session, Eleftheria. And uh, uh, I would love to share the screen to show the presentation. I hope the screen is visible. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, very good evening to everyone. And uh, I'm filled with both excitement and gratitude participating in this uh, wrap up session like previous year. Uh, I'm thrilled to have journeyed alongside uh, Eco Civilization as a collaborative partner again this year as we orchestrated three webinars delving into key facets related to water, namely circular economy, uh, gender equality, and ritual traditions and festivals. So allow me to provide a brief overview of the insights gained and actionable learning extracted from our second and third webinar at this moment. Let me begin from our second and uh, uh, second webinar exploring water and its impact on women empowerment focused on gender equality so let me show you the slide yes this is the slide so in this particular webinar we had the objective the broader objective was to foster awareness and dialogue on inter on intersectionality of water management and gender issues uh, and uh, uh, you know, to include inclusivity and equitable solutions in the realm of water-related challenges. Uh, so the basic idea was to find out actionable solutions. And uh, so let me discuss that uh, the challenges that we explored during this uh, webinar uh, around this topic, uh, which were uh, the result of water scarcity and its disproportionate strain of females of families. So one of the key issue that we found was, uh, you know, girls have to miss their education. And uh, as they have to go and collect and fetch water, which is extremely time consuming process, and it hinders their education opportunities and personal developments. Besides this, the process of water fetching every day from remote places, it adversely impact their, uh, you know, their health, their menstrual health, their hygiene. And uh, because in such places in general, in such remote places, deserted places, it is not a surprise that people may not find any kind of utilities which are uh, specially made for females, girls or any kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, safety net around them. So most of the time their safety and security is compromised other than health issues. Thus we concluded uh, with some of the solutions from technical point as well as from policy formation, uh, reformation point of view, some strategic framework point of view, collaborative solutions are needed. So what we concluded that the way forward is first of all empowering women empowering women through education and access to information which is the key solution to address this uh, water scarcity issue secondly uh, promoting women involvement in water management issues and decision making processes ensuring that diverse perspectives are brought to the table because most of the time what happens that only men in a patriarchal society are taking the decision and women is not getting the chance to give her perspective. Whereas the fact is that she is the person who is suffering most because of this issue. So she must be given chance to put her perspective across. Also, uh, there must be, uh, you know, uh, uh, like I said that uh, investing in technology 
uh, is very imperative that could reduce the time and efforts of women who are spending a lot of, lot of time on water collection. And uh, some water efficient irrigation systems, like uh, I had a, we discussed a case study, uh, water on wheels, where uh, one wheel of water can save water, can bring water for so many days. And that has wheels on the, you know, uh, water, uh, what you call, water bottle. So that's a big bottle and that is just 2,500 rupees as per Indian currency. And many Indian celebrities have endorsed that uh, project. So that's how uh, we can reduce burden on women's from women's shoulders, both metaphorically and literally. Of course, we cannot ignore the idea of community building to raise awareness, collaboration with NGOs, institutions, agencies, uh, which deal with water and implementing uh, women focused economic initiatives such as microfinancing program and skill development opportunities related to water management and uh, you know uh, other ways to make women economically empowered so uh, let me move on to the third webinar that we had and the title of this webinar was the role of water in rituals and festivals with an objective to explore the intrinsic connection between water conservation, rituals, festive, festive celebrations, and fostering the awareness. So that was the uh, key idea. And, uh, uh, you know, we explored so many cultural, historical, and social significance related with water uh, through this webinar. And we try to understand the role of water in different geographies, uh, continents, through the thread of rituals, traditions, and festivities. And our key takeaways from this webinar were uh, like the relation between the water and cultural tradition is multifaceted. And uh, it has a deep historical and symbolic si significance across various societies. Secondly, water is not only essential for human survival, but it also plays a very important, very crucial role in shaping up uh, cultural practices, beliefs, and rituals. Of course, uh, symbolizing purification in many cultures, renewal of life, and so many other aspects. So these rituals serve as powerful connectors, fostering a shared cultural identity and reinforcing the tradition. Undoubtedly, water unites us by fostering unity and continuity within diverse societies like across culture, water has been fundamental element in agricultural practices, influencing crop choices, irrigation systems and farming tradition. We also discuss examples highlighting the profound spiritual connection uh, that different regions attribute to water, emphasizing its role in rituals and symbolizing uh, spiritual transformation and purity. So I can conclude that addressing water issues indeed requires a holistic and conscious approach. This approach involves considering the interconnectedness of water with various aspects of human life, including environmental sustainability, social equity, and economic consideration. Of course, uh, let me also reiterate that solution should not only focus on the physical availability and quality of water, but also take into consideration cultural, ethical, and community perspective. So this was all from my side for this moment. And uh, I'll uh, uh, take a pause and invite my friend Nini to share her insights with us. Thank you. Thank you, Rajni. Thank you very much. You always uh, very comprehensive and remember the details of the session. I hope I can do like you. Let me try. <laughs> because I'm sometimes uh, very forgetful. And let me open the PowerPoint first. Now, let me go to my computer. Sorry about it. I have first open and then now it is closed automatically. I think uh, you all know me. My name is Nini and I am uh, Eco Civilization Myanmar Country Chair. Actually, I 
found eco-civilization on the internet and the website in July 2021. So during that time, I was learning, learning, and learning eco-civilization. Then at some point, I feel like, oh, this is what I want. And this is so similar to my commitment. Then I wrote to eco-civilization, our global chair, H.E. Dr. Fiolita Book, and curator, Dr. Rajni Vora. So they were very, very happy to take me in. And since then, I was like a virus, putting them water virus. So it was uh, quite a good journey. And do you see my screen? Ah, yeah. Okay. Thank you few later. So it was a virus I put into the global chair and another curator because our chair is the curator as well. So I was allowed in August 2021. What did we do in 2022? We started the water webinars. I'm very grateful that uh, they really open arms and welcome water. So the two webinars in March, 2nd of March, 2002, and 7th of September, 2002, it's like uh, preparing the land and mine and also collaboration. You know, we need to uh, see each other eye to eye. We come from the other corners of the globe and we have the different culture of working. For example, Fiolator is the former commissioner of EU as well as a former Deputy Prime Minister of Slovenia. So her culture of executing working is quite different from Dr. Rajne Vora. And likewise, me, again, another different. So these two webinars really keep us cohesion and also understand what do we do for eco-civilization and for that common goal and the common good. Then we started the 2023 as Eco-Civilization Year of Water, and it started from 8th of February, the inaugural webinar organized by Eco-Civilization Global Chair and the Secretariat. Then we keep on doing water risk reduction, water governance, the new uh, water governance paradigm, and also water and circular economy, responsible investment in sustainable management, legal rights for water, water and gender perspective, water, art and culture, and the rule of water in rituals and festivals. And today we are doing the wrap up session. So, I would like to make sure that I also share the glory with the people from Myanmar Water Academy who also volunteer with me and also our Myanmar um, eco-civilization wing. We are growing and we are 90 at this moment. So they also contribute. Then we have this second um, March 2022 webinar. We started with water diplomacy, water and peace. I will not uh, call the names and talk about each and every one because these are very famous and very accomplished uh, people around water sector. But I will only talk uh, what is the outcome of it and what do we gain. So from this very uh, first scientific sem seminar, even before the year, we were having quite different backgrounds and they were doing water diplomacy for lifelong. So the way 
the water people see what a diplomacy is to prevent the water war, to prevent the conflict from water sharing. But then we from the civil eco-civilization lands, it's not enough. It's not enough. We want to see water as a whole and holistic point of views, and we do not want to emphasize on conflict, but peace. And therefore, we also added water and peace. How do we do peace? Actually, it starts from inner self. Our colleague, Elfadir, she guided us meditating. She guided us making ourselves peaceful with oneself. Okay, one can never bring peace without inner peace. Some people like basketball, some people like music. Then our colleague Yuko came in with the musical part. So that's the way we see water and peace, the peaceful being, peaceful communities, and peaceful management, and peaceful governance, peaceful sharing. Therefore, our approach is quite a different thing. Therefore, the second title is Spiritual Transformation for Conscious Water Businesses. So we also recognize the part and the role of the private sector. People, when we talk about water, people only see government and the community. No, 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 there is a big part called private sector. So we also try to persuade the private sector and do the right thing with the conscious water businesses. So, of course, we will not change the world with one seminar, so we go to the another. That another one is the politics of waking up, power and possibility in the fractal age. Here, we were able to get the advisor of the eco-civilization, Professor Laszlo. Professor, greeting from me personally. I saw him in the audience. Yeah, so you see, we have gained the interest and also blessing from the thinkers and philosopher. And also you will see on the first row the panelists. So what do we talk about? We try to talk about co-creating a new water management paradigm. So one of our fabulous speaker, she shared, stop, reset, and go. So stop, reset, and go. What does it mean? Yes, peace comes from within and we have to take water. And we also created the, actually not we, sorry, Yuko and the group created We Are Water song. So we were convinced that we are water and we do the new water management paradigm from changing the mindset, changing the thinking. So these are the things that we have to get the politics of waking up, power and possibility in the fractal age. Then we were able to convince the whole eco-civilization community that the 2023 become the year of water. We started off with the inaugural webinar on 8th of February. So this one is on 22nd of February. We tackle water risk reduction because we in the water sector are seeing that if you invest $1 in water and sanitation business, you get $7 in return. Likewise, for the water risk, if you invest in water risk for $1,000, you can stop the loss and damages. You can't even number it. So therefore, we really have to think of water risk reduction as the very fast. So again, we have 
very famous and uh, practitioners, and they were recognized by the world with uh, famous awards and so on. So they came and they were talking about how do we tackle the water risk reduction from calculating it with the formulas to taking the active participation from the community to collaborating among many, many, many different disciplines like water professionals, lawyers, artists, writers, politicians, and business people, psychiatrists, et cetera, et cetera. Why? Water is everybody's business. So it is so important that we work together and we have to understand each other. But when we, as a human being, having the struggling soul and not having any inner peace, we cannot make peace outside. So that water risk reduction discussion, if I dwell on it, it will be next half an hour. So let me move quickly to the next one. That is co-creation, the new water governance paradigm. The official side event of the UN Water Conference and our number is V213. As you see here, a lot of people from South Asia, Southeast Asia, Myanmar, Bulgaria, Slovenia, and Canada, Australia, Netherlands, and Nepal. So, and Indonesia. So it looks like Europe, Asia, and only Africa is uh, lagging in this uh, picture. So what do we do? We join the water. The Water Action Decade started in 2018, and it will finish by 2028. So our eco-civilization water webinars and this virtual site events are officially connected to the UN, um, how do we call it? Action, UN action list. So we were one of the thousands of actions or even more than thousands in UN. But anyway, we were trying so much to convince that we need the new water governance paradigm. So if we put all together and say it in only one sentence, earlier we do the water governance as technological practices. So only the water professionals and government officials, they talk and decide and then do implementation and the rest has to follow. So almost very much top down. However, nowadays we also need more advanced technologies and also we treat water as socio-technical thing. So we have to manage with sociology and technology and science. So now in the new paradigm, from that three-ply governance, we put people. And as simple as that, but it is nearly impossible thing. If we were to convince the old school mind of the various governments and various political systems and various governance systems, but we don't shun away. We just speak out and luckily, even in the co uh, official conference, we get a lot of buy-in. So that was the uh, good thing that we can see. And we have this responsible investment in sustainable water management. So it is the carry on first awareness and second buying in and the third is collaboration. So when we say business people, the private sector, you are so important. If we were to change this world to be better, you are the key factor. 
you are the main actor. So they want to listen. What is the responsible business? So we again discuss and talk. And here we have two men, one from China and another from AI. So he is also part of the Connectathon. So you see the old timer, new timer, but the, the Professor Xi from uh, China is old timer with a new heart, just like our eco-civilization spirit. So these people discuss and we pr promoted the responsible investment in sustainable water management. That also include the water circular economy. Our Dr. Rajani is the leader of that circular economy part inside the eco-civilization wing. So from Myanmar, we also jo joined in with water circular economy plus electronic waste management. I should stop here and I should uh, turn over the floor to my lovely colleague. I think it is Yuko. Yeah, Yuko, please, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Nene. Um, yes. Let's keep going. Thank you so much for everyone for being here again. My name is Yuko and I am an artist in the group. I am so excited to share this one particular piece and share it with me. And so for as an art and culture in September, we had a session called Water, Art and Culture. And if you are open to when you hear art and culture what comes up to you when you hear art culture what's the word that comes up to you do you songs. imagine specific yeah song. songs song yeah pictures gonna put that in the yeah pictures community i love that community is a big one and I think one of the beautiful thing about being an artist and talking about this, we can go to any sector. There's an, so much opportunity to collaborate. We can sneak in everywhere, just like water can go into anywhere in any form. That's the beauty of art. Because uh, you know, hope and love, that's beautiful. And that's exactly who we want to embody that identity. That's beautiful as well. So I'm going to move on to the next slide. So when we're talking about art and culture, and I want to touch on a little bit of what we talked during the session, which is communication, uh, connecting to public through art and storytelling. So as we're sharing right now, art can mean so many things. And a lot of things Rajni was sharing earlier, the ritual, the festivals, empowerment, and the essence of water that also tie into art and culture, art and storytelling. So one thing that I want everyone to explore right now is who is making the art? Who is telling the story? So art is, is this, we the artists, you the artist, we're all people. These are a people's story. And this is our life story that we're creating, we're sharing together. And Yuka, people's Yuka, yes. are we supposed to see just a big gray screen? There's um, there's some um, gray boxes that are over uh, covering your that are covering your pictures. So maybe you can restart the. Uh... Wonderful. Thank you for that. Okay. All right. Do you see this right now? The connecting through art and storytelling. If not, I can keep talking. You see, um, image going. okay, I will stop sharing then. Great, wonderful. Yeah, and the story as a storyteller, world and technology is challenging me to talk to people rather than staring at the images. And again, going back to artists are people, and we're the we are telling the people story. And I think it is really important that when we are working with artists, when we are collaborating with artists, or when we're 
experiencing an art, especially in the space of talk about water. And we're today we're talking about how artists can contribute, how we can collaborate together and use the power of art and storytelling to create and empower this movement even farther. So when we're talking about story, we really want all of us to pay attention to whose story we're telling, who's who's receiving the story. And if it's a big production or a big work, who is investing in those art pieces? Who is investing in the artist? And who is choosing the narrative? And I'll touch on that a little bit. And why people are telling the story. And for example, in the art and culture and water, water art and culture session that happened in September, we had a two filmmakers talk about their artwork. One person was a documentary filmmaker and the, per the other person was a narrative film, completely fiction story of what would the world look like if there is no water, imagine that. So even though the water topic, there is a variety of sharing the information, even just a one medium of filmmaking. I want us to explore who is listening and who is receiving the story in this narrative and how can we tell that story to um, emphasize really the message more? And even in the, in the perform, if somebody is performing, and we will talk about a little bit later with performances, or is someone interacting with you? Are people able to engage? And understand the concept of water, understand the concept of climate, understand the concept of working together in a more interactive way, or is the person having an intimate moment of seeing an exhibit and have a reflective moment. When you're working with an artist or art group or art piece, that's something we can think and explore as we move forward with this um, movement. And thing great wonderful so i will pass it back to me see mom giving it back to and i'll give it back to nini thank you yuka and back to nini this time with the yeah. topic of legal rights for water yeah, thank you, Yuko. Thank you, few later. Yeah, this that's why you see I stopped before that very confusing name. And uh, let me go back to my um PowerPoint and I put it on that that page so that I can get it to show you legal rights uh, for water, you see? And people try to correct me, legal rights to water, because people always think water is our subject. And uh, we have to talk about legal rights to water. I need water. I have a right to have it. And I have uh, industry and factory, so I have more rights to have it. And I have a lake beside my house, so it is mine, mine, mine. So here, Eco Civilization webinar, we talk about legal rights for water because uh, we have to think why our world is so miserable and why we have uh, never uh, having peace and never having uh, good stability and never having the equal distribution of wealth and power. That is why we come from the lens of legal rights for water. But of course, it is not a drop of water. I used to make it and put it on my chain as a necklace. But we have to talk about 
body of waters. So to make it clear, we put instead of water, we put rivers or we put basin. Then we have the phrase like water, uh, rights for water, bodies, right for basin, right for river. So one of our panelists, again, our panelists are very well known and also very uh, learned uh, researchers. So he said, from rights to water to rights for rivers. And another professor said, from rights to water to rights for basins. So we are talking about water bodies. Some reflections, what we get it is the water management, the governance, oh no, not this, not that slide I am doing. Yeah, that was the keyboard um, mixing. So in legal rights for water, we discuss about embracing the complexity, uncertainty and sustainability. So people always talk about the right to water because they want it. And next day they are greed is growing. So we need to embrace the deep complexity and uncertainty of water resources management. We need to be asking the right questions. In this example, the question should not be how to develop irrigation in Northern America or Southern Myanmar or in Slovenia or Gujarat. But what future do we want for that certain part of the earth, be it in Slovenia or be it in Canada? Is there a role for irrigated agriculture in that future? So these are the right questions we have to ask. If there is a role, how can it be done in a way suited to the context? So these are the things we put. Yes, we have a right to water, but water also have a right to flow. Water always have a right to serve the humankind plus the biodiversity. So these are the contexts that we do. And then we discuss about sustainability. Sustainability is better seen as a measure of the relationship between the community as learners and their environment rather than an externally designed goal to be achieved. So people start talking about sustainability when we talk about 17 SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals. Earlier, we, we learn from our mistakes that MDGs, eight MDGs, they were from the top and that water expert has started jotting down eight MDGs. At the end, we know that this is not the way to do if we were to achieve the goal and the impact. Therefore, this is the statement that we apply now. Sustainability is better seen as a measure of the relationship between the community as learners and their environment rather than an externally designed goal to be achieved. And another point I want to bring to you as a gist of this session is other signs. You know, we have still long way to go things we'll still hear too much and too often are, I own the water that falls on my property. I do the rainwater harvesting. In some countries, you are not allowed to collect your rain out of your own roof. So you see how different the water laws and the right are complicated. And to make uh, the thing into even uh, was the irrigation indicators and what is the good irrigation? Can you imagine how many indicators? 
350 different decision factors are identified. It's only in irrigation. So we don't go for uh, hydropower or you name it, okay? So this is how we are having that complexity. And in the webinar, we discuss about it and we come up with a common sentiment, rivers are people too. Rivers has to be treated as a living entity. Water in natural state, human rights to water and sanitation, increasing recognition of indigenous interests, rights and responsibilities in water. Example, need to refresh uh, the country's uh, national water law. Open access water use, customary rights and responsibilities, increasing social responsibilities for water use. Example, reflected in the license fees, conditions, and now even application of AI in the town water supply, city water supply, and another decision-making bodies. So decision support systems where earlier people created simulators and the technicians, but now AI coming into the way of human and the machine. So it is, trust me, very complicated. Another is, Parsonage for rivers, and it is a new one. That philosophy started in 2016. And now in 2023, we are discussing about this session. So I could only say, yes, eco-civilization is dutiful because we do not forget the hottest issue in our in our world or planet, as you like. And that was the end of my scientific webinars um, wrap up section by section by section. However, in the water and gender perspective, one of the colleagues in the Dr. Rajni's poster, she was not able to come at the last moment. So I was a replacement, uh, instant, instant uh, replacement. And we did this uh, new, thanks to Natasha, we did this as a new poster and I contributed as a panelist because gender is my, uh, half of the heart together with water. I was the founding board member of the Gender and Water Alliance for the first uh, two years, 2003 to five. We established in 2003. It was the result of 2000 Second World Water Forum in The Hague. So we decided that we need gender to be promoted in the water sector. So we established Gender and Water Alliance. And the rule is each and every elected steering committee member, even founder or whatever, they stay two years and then hand over the leadership. So it is still alive and kicking and growing. So I'm also very proud of Water and Gender Alliance. So if I may go for another two minutes, few later, is it okay? Two more minutes. I would rather save this for your closing remarks okay. that you still have. Thank you very much. Ah, okay, okay. In this case, I have to appear one more time. Thank you. Thank you, Violeta. I stop here. And I would call for my dear Rajni. You take the floor. Thank you so much, Nini. And, uh, uh, you know, you are always a big support system. Always, and we can always rely on you every time we feel that you can help us uh, because we are working as a team. And uh, I'm highly uh, grateful to you uh, attending that webinar and taking that role of uh, panelist that day. So thank you once again, Nini, for being the support system. <laughs> thank you system. for giving me that opportunity as well. <laughs> I always want to do it. Thank you. Totally appreciate it. And it's time to talk about our uh, 
uh, first webinar, which was based on uh, circular circular economy. Uh, let me go to the slideshow. Uh, okay, yeah. So I think, uh, is it visible? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, so this was uh, our first webinar that I have yet to discuss with you our learning from this webinar. And as uh, I have stated here that our objective was empowering sustainable water management and fostering a circular economy through insightful discussions and innovative solutions briefly. Some of the key challenges that we discuss contributing to water stress, which might vary you know, country to country, place to place. Uh, there were discussion on illegal water extraction from some places and then concentration of population in few economically exponentially growing cities, which seems to be a universal problem, as a matter of fact, and lack of circular economy projects or either their improper execution or implementation of strategies. All these things, uh, are contributing to intensifying the demand for water resources. So the essential part of this discussion was that, uh, you know, uh, addressing these challenges, again, need interconnected strategies, including individual state and country targets to enhance water use efficiency, embracing technologies such as biofactories, digitalization, and green infrastructure. Also, at a broader level, I would say to effectively combat water-related issues, behavioral changes is imperative. It is really, really important point that our perspective, the way we look at this issue must be changed. And there is a pressing need for more drives and initiatives at various levels uh, beyond government policies and uh, strategies. Uh, so I think the approach that we discuss through as a solution during this webinar will promote responsible resource management, aiming to close the loop on water consumption and waste. And also, let me highlight one point that countries like, uh, you know, extremely uh, advanced countries like Switzerland, uh, Slovenia, these countries have set extremely good examples for the world. And these countries are making significant impact by incorporating circular economy principles, including feedback mechanism to reintegrate clean wastewater into surface water. And implementing control measures is, is very crucial to maintain the optimum level of water and safeguarding the precious resource. So I would say that once again, in a nutshell, it is, it is all about creating a holistic and interconnected system that optimizes water use, minimizes waste, and contributes to the overall well-being of both the environment and communities. So this was, in a nutshell, our learning, our takeaways from that particular webinar, which was our first webinar. And once again, may I request Dr. Nini to take the floor. Yeah, thank you, Rajni. Thank you so much. Uh, let me share the slide again. Yeah, so this is the last part of my intervention. And uh, of course it is, uh, the, the heading is uh, risk management and water diplomacy. But as I have, started out with a smaller, smaller introduction on each of the panel. Now I will put them all together and tell the philosophy behind it, like rethinking of water, place, and community. Our standing point is that rivers, they are water bodies, they are water systems, are fundamentally social and material organizations that we need to look at from that point. The material dimensions of water, 
we call it H2O or Ye or our Yuko's uh, creation, you see in her movie. In Myanmar, it is Ye and Aqua, Maiji, water, everything. So these are H2O-ness. It cannot be fully understood without understanding water as social. I come from the background of civil engineer and civil engineers do not appreciate me when I talk about the social issues. They thought that I want to run away from the very, very difficult mathematics. No, 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 no. I'm very happy with my mathematics. I do the coding for simulation model development, but that is only half of the story. Half of the story. The other half is social. Like Dr. Rajni said, we have to change our behavior. If we don't, we will never solve water problem. Likewise, place and community, often understood through lenses focusing on the experience of people, cannot be fully understood except in relation to water because the people's mentality is water come from the sky and it's a gift of God, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Without going that further ado, I want to tackle like in this um, in this sustainable development co-creation, we see the whole country, for example, if you look at this as a country, you have a government, national government, academia, research institution, they are very close to government because government wants to talk to the professionals and academia. And then the second layer is non-governmental organizations. They said they speak for the people and they are the voice of the voiceless and they are also very well educated so they can relate to academician and research institution and they go straight to the government Okay, okay, okay. But the bottom billion, that is communities. And they are the majority. And they don't have the big interest like, I want to govern the whole country. No way. They want their own life, nice and peaceful and good earning. And they want rituals. They want to go to cinema. And they want to sing the song like a human being. They want the human life. But we were governed by this red, tiny little spot. And everybody is having jeopardy here. Therefore, we think of multi-layer co-creation. We cannot do it in the political arena. I never do. I will never become a politician because I don't have faculty or capability or caliber, whatever you like it. But what I'm saying is in the water sector, as a track to co-creation, co-management, co-governance, how do we do? Individuals' role and responsibility in sustainable water management. We need to define that and make the capacity building. And then we look at the water budget, allocation at the cabinet level, and develop water circular economy practices locally and in communities. Then we get the sustain sustainable management, sustainability of water industries, fear consciousness. We, we, we will have to put the law and uh, rules and regulations and fine and penalties, punishment. That's again, only half of the, the problem or the solution. The other half is the knowledge, understanding, awareness, and self-regulation. If a CEO or millionaire do the green thing in his company, we don't need to write the law. So where eco-civilization come in? Eco-civilization has a clear mission. The first to create planet Earth as an 
eco zone of the universe. Our chair already said that in her opening speech. With its rich biodiversity at its core. That's the first part. The second part, to populate the universe by using technology, curiosity, and greatness to derive it. And the writer or author or curator may write it, this word greatness in her own meaning, but how I relate to my projection, my understanding is that the greatness means it is better human being, the inner purity and inner peace. And these three are the greatest of all the human behavior. Then we go to water management paradigms. We are asking for new paradigm, but how many in the past? I will not dwell on this. Uh, you can read it and you can also get the copy of this presentation. I will put my email in the chat box. So if you want instant access, you ask me, or you can wait, go to the www.ecocivilization.eu. It will be published by its own time. So the present one is we call six paradigm. It has to apply hydroinformatics tools and systems thinking. That's why we have source to sea and other, you know, ocean plastic and so on. In the future, we need a new paradigm that is three ply sociotechnology plus system science plus spiritual transformation. Begin with leadership principles. And here, we have a very good leadership wing, which is led by Sonia. She did the AEIOU universe, and I am the men member of it. So I'm one of AEIOU. What AEIOU means, again, go to the ecocivilization.eu website. You will see how leader should transform his or herself and go with the transformation, spiritual transformation, and we can do it. So to revive human greatness and nature together. So that is what we are doing. Are we all alone? No. It is only this slide full, but you can go to the ecocivilization.eu. You will see the galaxy of like-minded. Okay, so... Number 15 is the last part, the key messages. Water is not a problem. I mean it, water is never a problem. Water governance and water management have fundamental problems because it is made by human beings. We were wrong, including me, we human beings. We're wrong. We can ride them all. We have a chance not only to prevent the worst effects of climate change, but also to make the world better right now. Really, right now. By governing and managing water in humane ways. To be a humane, humanly humane or humane leader, then go back to AEIOU. Thank you very, very much for your time and attention. I'm proud to be one of the eco-civilization. And I want to thank all 90 eco-civilization Myanmar members. I'm very, very proud of you. And I can stand and speak on behalf of all of us only because you supported me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nini, for this comprehensive overview. And uh, it's a very good closure of the overview of all the sessions that we've had. Now I'd like to ask Yuka to uh, contribute one more piece from the cluster of artists and culture, and then we'll proceed to what's evolving in the future.
All right. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for the wonderful summary, Nini, and that that was actually a great tie in for what I'm about to share about. So there are so many ways that artists can work with organizations policymakers, a cross sector, the community and the government, the the triangle that the, that Nini just shared in her slide. And we are here to be a translator. We're here to be a edu part of the educator who appear to be part of the translator so that we can share more knowledge. We can share more understanding to what water is, how important that it how important it is that we change our behavior, how important it is that we change the mindset, how important it is that we change the relationship with each other. So there are many wonderful organizations and events, the conferences, those are inviting artists to share artwork and there are artists to share their voices and that we need more of that. And there are so many organizations who artist-led organization, as well as organization like eco-civilization, the artists are a part of the movement. Artists are a part of the creating and facilitating committee. And so it's really important that we are not only product, we as an artist work are not only the product, so that we can help people to make a cultural change, help people to have a more curiosity, Maybe we can translate more policy or make that research and academic work available for people to ingest, make it more digestible information can really create the movement because when it's overwhelming, we won't be able to take action. We need a tiny guidelines. We need a tiny step. The people worry. Those are the things that we can relate. And maybe when we recognize that what's circular economy mean for us, when we realize what water management looks like, what risk management can look like in a water sector, we're able to help people take the next step. We're able to help people guide what is the most powerful movement that we as a community come together and create so that we can create more artwork that can create the ripple effect to emphasize the movement and empower people's action. Because when we are talking about top-down power dynamic, most people feel like they, their voices are not being heard. So everything we've been talking about, um, gender inequality, Rajni has shared earlier, to all the power dynamic that was in the triangle. So we are able to smash them and make them flat and can work from the same place as an equal human being. I'm gonna stop sharing this for a minute. And my last art piece will share uh, as a closing piece, I'll summarize everything that we've been talking. And I am so excited to share that in a close um, and, and I will pass to Violeta. Thank you very much, Yuka, and thank you for being so articulated in uh, for all of us to understand how art and culture can be intertwined in our day-to-day -day activities and just become a solid member of any kind of eco-civilization engagement and eco ecosystem engagement uh, in the future as well. I hope this is paving the way to uh, bring you on board, uh, not just as an addition, but as an active member as we're trying to learn from you and do it here. So uh, before I move on, um, Alexander Laszlo, Dr. Alexander Laszlo was, uh, has been with us for a while, I think almost since the beginning. And um, he posted an interesting comment in the chat, um, complimenting what has been said already. And uh, he used the expression, uh, the legal rights of water. And uh, I invited him to elaborate a little bit on his proposal, because it's great to have this third dimension. So to water, for, for water, and now also off water. Alexander, the stage is yours. Thank you so much. And, and I don't want to take up uh, too much time here. But uh, what uh, joy it is to be part of this. This is serious. And at the same time, it is fun. It is needed. It is slow. Uh, frankly, as we have been saying throughout this, flow is everything. 
you know, human beings, I think it was David Bohm who said, I am a pattern, I am a flow, I'm more like a river than I am like a thing, something fixed. I change from moment to moment. And this recognizing that we are, not only are we water in the sense of the, our composition, but in the sense of our flow and our being, I think this is, is, is essential. Um, I was a little late in joining because I pulled my back out this morning as I was just doing a regular motion. I moved and you know how that is. Well, maybe you don't, but at my age, huh. but I sat here with Eleftheria's fantastic, beautiful meditation. And there was a healing. There was, I feeling so much better being part of this flow. I wanted to then just share with you this, uh, something that Majida also put in the comments here. Water is life. It is flow. We know that we, in so many languages, we say water is life. It's such a common expression. How do we take that to heart? Um, Nai Nai was uh, saying so beautifully as well, do the green thing. I like that expression. But I think we should start also now thinking how to do the blue thing. And really, you know, it, it's the world is mainly blue more than it is green. You look at it from space, it's a blue dot, right? So how do we recognize that we can, the, the new green is blue? You know, this is this is the I think the spirit of our the spirit of our planet is blue, and I think that is something which you can bring in. Yuko was talking so nicely. She talked about the ripple effect, and and that's the ripple effect. This, well, everything is water. Even this notion of how we communicate and and share with each other. So I'm going to now wrap up, but I wanted to bring this notion of spirit into it. Um, but I'm going to share with you this haiku from a friend of mine. And if that's okay, I think I can just put it right here. Um, so this comes from Barbara Jo Shipka. Proceed. When I fear the world has ceased to hear me, I am still flowing water. I think it's a beautiful, a beautiful haiku, exactly as we are now proceeding to the next stage, is looking forward as as uh, Villette is saying, this is what we're doing right now. I put it also into our chat over here. Um, and still flowing water, I think, is so important as an expression because it means that we have a, a stillness, like in the meditation that Eleftheria was bringing us into. There's a stillness, a presence, and a flow. And that contrast between still and flow, that juxtaposition, but it's continuous. It's a ripple it's still flow. I if I could take a name for myself one day, I would love to be called still flow. <laughs> that would be my aspiration. So with that, I leave you with a final quote here. Um, this uh, comes from, uh, from Raymond Williams, who says, to be truly radical is to make hope possible rather than despair convincing. I think this is what we're doing. We are making this tangible. Thank you so much. Back to you, Violeta. Thank you very much, Alexander. That reflects uh, several conversations we've had lately. So uh, thank you very much. And we will take that on board very kindly and respectfully. And um, let's move now to the uh, last part of today's session. And uh, uh, if you're bear with us a few more minutes, I know you have to go at the top of the hour. Uh, but um, uh, I hope we will find additional points of uh, collaboration soon. So uh, let me now take this moment and uh, invite you just to reflect a little bit what you've been hearing so far. So if anybody would like to speak and uh, share additionally, in addition to what Alexander so beautifully shared with us, and uh, now it's the moment. Um, so we're opening up uh, the possibility to speak and comment. Uh, if you prefer to continue to comment in the chat, of course, that is uh, absolutely welcoming as well. So if there is anybody who would like to share some thoughts, reflections, please come on board.
Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Audible. My name is Rajan Johari, and I am speaking to you from New Delhi, uh, India. Uh, I am, by my background, I am a social anthropologist, and by my profession, I am a corporate business manager. What I heard today was so powerful especially the amount of effort, thinking, and the work that has gone in the past two years. And I've just been two weeks onto the eco-civilization, uh, understanding of the work and the processes involved. So when you asked Violetta about what are the things that we should be able to do, if I am able to put it into just two or three words, I think everyone spoke about the challenges and the methodology and how we need to move into the awareness level. I think now after two years of hard work, this is the time to move from awareness to action. And I'm, I'm noticing that a lot of people have been taking a lot of action, but perhaps one of the things that kind of makes us feel a bit more concerned is that the behavior and the attitude of rest of the people who are not connected with water or with the environment or with the cultural ecology as a whole, their behavior and attitude at the base level needs to be changed. And then over a period of time, it may lead us into transformation, especially when the new world, as Violeta says, is happening, it's just around the corner. To work on the behavior by design, I personally would like to assist each one of you with the work that you have done and help you to see how can I make that from an anthropological perspective, which involves the culture, and also from a process point of view, which involves the methodology, from the operation point of view, which means that we will need to strategize a little bit to say, how can the impact of what you are doing be felt more? And lastly, but not the least, is that we need to connect with more people. I've been doing the last part more, especially young children and young people. And I'm so glad that I heard two words being spoken by Yuko. And she said, the water bottle. And in fact, one of the projects that I've been doing over the past so many years it's called My Water Bottle. And this mm -hmm. is with children who are uh, one year, uh, from class one, level one, to standard three or four. That They're just about eight to 10 years old. The second one, which I heard, was exactly what we have been doing. It's called Earth Without Water. And one of the important things that was said in the conversation with various teachers, professors, and policymakers was that we're losing water. And one of us argued and we said, since water is also matter, it can't be lost out of this universe. It's the terranium, like an aquarium. Earth is a terranium. So it has become unusable or it has got lost somewhere, but it can't kind of vanish. So we need to find ways to use the water properly and blend it into our music, into a culture like, like so wonderfully it was done in the two poems and the music and the art, and take it across to people to say, every drop of water is important. So uh, I got help from the All India Radio, which is the official radio of India, and it's called Akash Mani. And we did a series called a series, Bundo Ki Tute Na Ladi, which means that every single drop should form a chain. And then we connected 100 young warriors called water warriors, and we put into action through water clubs, water brigades, what can be done to change the behavior and attitude. It's a very far cry. I mean, we just maybe have started tinkering a little bit onto the onto the whole uh, biosphere and the whole panorama and the diaspora. But I think we focused more. On, so I'm, I'm glad that I learned so many wonderful things from people who mentioned about the seminars and the webinars, but I'd like to help in putting 
into action what each one of you perhaps wants to do to make it go onto the ground. This is what I wanted to share, Violet. And I'm sorry I may have uh, overstepped my understanding because I'm just two weeks oh, no, old no. into looking <laughs> at. No, uh, no, 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 uh, Rajan, it's been a very uh, beautiful intervention. And uh, you're right, um, we are looking for ways and maybe even with your help, we can move faster from uh, awareness uh, to action. Uh, it's a it's a big step and uh, we are counting on uh, country level engagements uh, to carry on these actions but uh, as i posted already uh, a few a few comments back uh, an internet address uh, i would love to hear from you and we will engage further in the discussion and conversation and even yeah, today definitely. after the end of this session uh, we will continue. Whoever has time can stay, and we will continue discussing uh, the Excellent. program for the future. Thank you very much for, for your intervention. Very valuable you, and great examples. Thank you. Do we see anybody else? Uh, Diana, please go ahead. Uh, Diana, please go ahead. Diana has a hand up. Sorry, sorry that uh, I had some uh, technical problems to open. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, so much, I'm so much impressed of how much was done. And I see here the knowledge and wisdom of, of uh, Nini and Vajni and your energy as organizer and engine for bringing this ahead. I uh, so uh, and it's so beautifully also uh, flowing together with arts meditation that was offered by our sisters. So I'm really impressed, and um, I myself uh, wish that I had the opportunity to do more, but unfortunately for various reasons I was not able mm. to support enough this process. So next year, I definitely have to compensate. So to <laughs> That's wonderful news, Diana. We would love to hear yeah, from you a, more. I make a pledge. So be, please feel free to use me <laughs> next year. Super. Thank you very much for all the work that you have done. It's so Thank beautiful. You. Thank you. And I see two more hands. Uh, one is Thank from, you. And I see two more yes, hands. And uh, one is from Majida. Please go ahead. Yes, Majida first and then Jaya. Please go ahead. Majida first and then Jaya. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, okay, please great. go ahead. Um, my internet is very low. I hope it doesn't break. Um, firstly, it was what I nourishing to be in a room and have the energy of water being given the attention. And I, I there's two things that had come to mind before the first speaker. What came to heart was um, the fact that, for example, here in the Barona culture, the, the, the water is, uh, the concept of owning water is unimaginable. It's like telling me you own the sky. So there are um, cultures and worlds where they already operating one of were actually, I mean, because of globalization, everything's quite different. I have a consciousness of a different relationship with water. And um, I was, there was a previous speaker who was talking about uh, the actions, um, what aware beyond awareness, the action. And of course, action is needed. But um, I feel very strongly that the most important, very important first step is um, enlarging, expanding the awareness on water. Um, not only on the, the current situations and everything, but it's even but we, when we look at the symbolisms or the, the histories and all the goddesses of water that exist only just in the Egyptian past history uh, or in many parts of different um, traditions and cultures that having more knowledge or knowing even that just expands our views. And I feel that to expand one's views and one's belief in, gives more power to be able to take action. Um, so, of course, I'm completely pro-action on water, and, uh, but I feel that at the same time, and even to, to make action more possible, there is a, a re-strengthening 
of the awareness or even making aware some people just don't even understand it to be just other than a commodity, it, um, something rather urgent and necessary um, because it, yes, it is life. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that and perhaps in the future and I'm happy to do more research in the different um, cultures and mythologies and the, and the symbolisms of water because um, I feel that there's a really lack of um, realization for a majority of it being other than a commodity. Um, so yeah, that's just my two cents that I wanted thank to you. Thank and you. Thank you very much for your message. Thank message you to all of you. Ethiopia. Uh, and Majida, have a great time. All of you. Uh, and Majida, have a and great time. And now Jeff. Hello. And now Jeff. Hello. Hello. Yes, go Can ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. go ahead. Yes. OK. Yes. Uh, as uh, Dr. Yes. 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 Nini uh, introduced me in the opening of the ceremony, uh, and I am the one of the, the irrigation engineer from Myanmar now visiting in Singapore. So I am working as a civil engineer uh, about 35 years, and now I am retiring, and I am still working for the water resource management for my country. Okay, so so from, from you are, some of the pre presentation, I have to discuss uh, two things. One is the, what I found is that one of the uh, present uh, showed show the slides uh, that knowledge and uh, understanding for water management it is a very uh, big the, the, the presentation. And the, as the, we are the, the senior, Engineer, what else is the engineer? So we, I am still working for, to share my knowledge and experiences to the, the 21st century young generations. So as I said, so I am, the, the, I am publishing uh, our history of our irrigation uh, for our country. Now for the time being, as yet you have the water action decade for, for 2023. I am still working for the action plan, action plans and then writing a book recently in the in, in this month what is in the, is the, the the main thing is the the storing of the underground water in the in the sand rivers i'm i'm working and i'm working and my country is also the making making the the some small scale project as a final project for our country in the dry zone of central dry zone of Myanmar where the water scarce areas. So this is our achievement in our country, a great achievement in our country, in, in my department of irrigation department in Myanmar. So this is our water for aging for our country. Thank you. Thank you very much for this intervention as well. Thank you very Thank much for bringing great uh, story from Myanmar again uh, to uh, our audience. And now, uh, last but not least, uh, before we move on, Jeff, please. Thank you, uh, Violetta. Thank you so much. Um, unfortunately, I missed most of this session um, because I was on a on a field trip in Barcelona as part of a a research project called Upwater, a European Union project. And uh, I just wanted to add my thanks to what you and Nini and all the organisers have done over the last year or more to um, create such a, a wonderful um, meeting of the minds and, and ideas and different perspectives. And it was really quite a powerful and different forum to, to what you normally see. And um, I found it very refreshing, um, many really interesting ideas. Um, and when I put that back together with the thoughts from today, going on the field trip to, you know, a local challenge here, and, you know, these these sessions, these ideas, th these meeting of minds are great to put ideas on the table. But what, what it comes back to in the end is to have a, a really good understanding of the local context and and to ensure that the ideas are being tested and challenged through that local lens and the needs of of the local people um at, at you know in various parts of society but um you know for me this forum has been a, a great mechanism to to float new ideas and to to you know add add um 
add more tools to the toolkit. So thank you both and thank you all again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jeff, uh, for your comment and, of course, for your active participation in one of our sessions, which is a very me memorable one. I mean, you're doing great things uh, down in Australia and, as you I can see now, trying to share it globally as well. And that's the way to go. And uh, I will uh, now sh continue and really try to briefly uh, start that dialogue and conversation. How can we actually follow these great advices and uh, that we just heard as comments from the audience, but also um, how can we build even stronger on the experience of this year and a half of engagement, direct engagement with water, raising the awareness, uh, broadening the consciousness within which new things can emerge and, and then get, of course, manifested. Uh, to uh, the way forward in 2024, uh, we will not reinvent the wheel, but definitely uh, we would like to put forward a manifesto a manifesto for a new water paradigm, which will hopefully consist of all the learnings and all the wisdoms that we were able to capture. But I'm already inviting you to, to collaborate further and uh, be an active collaborator of the emergence of this uh, manifesto. The second thing I've heard today several times, and yes, indeed, we have to go more local. Uh, I was uh, sorry that we could not hear from our friend Florence from Kenya, who's who actually hosted a very local event, and she's doing a great job uh, in uh, her hometown and her home country. Uh, and that's exactly where we would like to put our strength now, to get the hands-on stories from the uh, local environments, uh, being able to uh, collaborate well with the global view and global agenda that we co-create as well. So this uh, local to global and global to local uh, has an incredible opportunity to prove itself as the right concept in the field of water. So local events, community science, which we've heard several times during our sessions, uh, I will always recall the, the, uh, the conversation we had with uh, our dear friend from Nepal who shared uh, what uh, enormous trouble uh, they got themselves into because they were not listening to community science. Uh, and these, there are many examples like that. Uh, the floods, uh, the enormous floods that uh, have been happening in Europe lately, uh, we, we actually experienced from the first hand what it means not to follow the wisdom of communities and neglect uh, the voices of community. Uh, and then of course the devastating damages are even much bigger than they were supposed to be. Uh, due to the floods that appear due to the climate change, the weather change of the weather conditions and atmospheric rivers uh, that are more and more common. Uh, and of course, these local action groups and local actions, uh, I hope, uh, will show the way uh, into our even deeper collaboration in 2024. The third announcement I'd like to do, we are putting together now a book. Uh, I think all these great ideas and great uh, topics and all the uh, messages that really strengthen our awareness, but also, as I said before, broaden our consciousness where the actions can take place, uh, we would like to capture them in the book. So we have already invited all of our uh, speakers, but if you have a great project or if you really uh, have a message to pass, uh, you're welcome to join us as well. And all that will be wrapped up in, uh, in a conference which we plan to have next year and uh, pave the way for the focus topic of 2025, which will be a soil. So next year we will bring soil and water uh, together and uh, really open up yet another essential topic for life, an essential topic for uh, sustainability of food and sustainability of our lives. So uh, this will follow up uh, the launch of the book 
and of course the launch of the manifesto. So many exciting things just in the field of water. And of course, that is not all that we're going to be doing next year within Eco Civilization Movement. But in order to learn even more about that, I would like to invite you today to join us at the wrap up session on Eco Civilization 2023, which will be the 17th of January uh, next year. That is where we're going to take a look also, a closer look of all other activities that have been happening within Eco Civilization Movement. Uh, and of course, Share, share with you uh, an ambitious agenda for 2024 of the eco-civilization movement. But uh, before, of course, we have the closing ceremony and closing uh, art contribution, I would like to invite Rajni to show us a bit more about the book that is uh, we are putting together and clarify maybe some questions that you already have. Rajni, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Violeta. And once again, uh, I'm going to share with you a, a slide, a very simple, uh, but I, I'm, I'm sure it would give you precise idea uh, as to uh, what endeavors we are going to put in through this book. And uh, friends, as you know, that uh, in the year, uh, uh, last year, we have already launched a successful book on water, uh, on circular economy, best case uh, practices in circular economy. And we are ready to come up uh, with our next publication on the theme water as we celebrated this year, 2023, as Year of Water, wherein you will find all key learnings that our esteemed speakers who participated in our water webinar series shared during the webinar. And let me briefly share the purpose of this book. Uh, the purpose of this book is to compile a comprehensive resource that delves into various aspects of water, bringing together diverse perspectives, expertise, and insights. Uh, there are five essential key points. Uh, and the first one is we want a comprehensive coverage, like I have mentioned on my PPT also. We aim to create a book that provides a holistic view of water, you know, covering a wide range of topics from environmental to ecological aspects to social, scientific, geostrategic, and cultural perspectives. So different perspective we want to bring uh, in one publication. That is what we are endeavoring, uh, that is what we will endeavor. And we believe that the collection of articles authored by these all experts, individuals, with such a rich diversity of knowledge and experiences will make this book truly, truly unique and informative. And apart from this, this book will focus on education and spreading awareness. Uh, the book will serve as an educational tool and uh, it will definitely uh, uh, must be proving uh, very important uh, in in everyone's life. That is what our efforts are. And it is it will highlight the challenges, solution, and opportunities related to the vital resource. We believe that uh, knowledge sharing is very, very important because if you have knowledge and you are not sharing it with the world, what's the point of having knowledge? And uh, we always look forward to foster collaborations, cultivate a culture of continuous learning, and uh, we want to propel the innovation. And we actually want that we should be embrace the exchange of ideas and information, not only to empower individual, but also to enrich the collective intelligence of communities and organizations. And let me take this opportunity to congratulate uh, our very dear Violeta on this occasion, who has put her heart and soul consistently, uh, you know, in this initiative. And despite so many challenges that she faced uh, through this year, uh, as uh, you know, she is always a winner. She always emerges as a winner. And uh, there is so much to learn from you, Violeta. Every time I meet you, every time I hear you, hats off to you, hats off to your courage and determination, indeed. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rajni. I think the beauty of this movement is actually uh, uh, in the fact that we are all doing this to each other. And that that is what drives us, is this incredible 
opportunity to learn from each other and incredible passion that we all put into exploring new boundaries and uh, exploring new possibilities to learn how to human better. And I know that we share also another passion, which is uh, how to be a proud ancestors of our future generations. And that is bonding us on all topics, but water of course has a special place in our hearts and in our bodies and in our spaces. So thank you for sharing this. Maybe uh, Rajni, a few more information uh, about the deadlines. We have an early deadline and then the, the last deadline for the submissions. Uh, yes, so uh, we have our first uh, deadline. Uh, of course, we want to stick to that. We would love to, uh, we would love our contributors to stick to that deadline. That is 20th December. And uh, we hope that uh, we receive uh, by then uh, most of the contributions. And if because of some reasons uh, which are unavoidable, our contributors are not able to share, then uh, uh, maybe the uh, first uh, or second week of the next year, uh, we may consider. But again, like I said, that we do not want to change the deadline. We want to stick to that de deadline, which is 20th December. So please, friends, uh, we welcome you to contribute. Uh, if you have interest, if you have expertise in this area, and we are definitely uh, welcoming all the scholars, uh, all the people who have expertise in this field to uh, you know to shake hands with us and collaborate with us yeah but let's say as well that we are not expecting uh, like 20 30 pages of contributions we would like you to stick with uh, two to three pages and uh, rajni has put together all the instructions uh, which um, we uh, are happy to share with those that are interested in collaboration. And uh, as she said, um, we would like to really complete uh, by the end of uh, January also uh, all the framework so that we would really want to get whoever is really interested to contribute these two to three pages of the key messages, key experiences, description of the key project uh, or uh, the, uh, the aspirations uh, related to uh, to water, and uh, um, when in the in January we will do a framework. Also look for uh, publishers and uh, those that will collaborate with us and hopefully cover the expenses. Uh, so far we've been covering all by ourselves, and uh, maybe it's time to invite some other people to join us and support us as well. So, but uh, in any case. Uh, please consider uh, contributing and bringing your view, your passion, your uh, information um, to the global community about this essential element of life that we call water. So uh, before we close the session and just open it for a free discussion, I would like to ask now uh, Eleftheria to uh, close the dialogue and then ask Yuko to complete it with the last art piece. Please. Thank you <clears throat> so much, Violetta, and all the contributors and everybody that is here just in the spirit of really appreciating our most precious resource, which is water. And so I will just invite you again to just close your eyes and perhaps put your hands on your heart just let all of this connection, information, unity together just land softly in your being. And again, just connecting with that flow and the still pool of water within you. And if you have a glass of water or a bottle of water with you, perhaps you could reach out, hold your water, water stores memory, and whatever feels right to you, just infusing gratitude, maybe peace and love, 
with the water. The same water our ancestors connected with, drank, and appreciated. And as you just experience drinking a sip of your water, taking in to the still pool of the water within you, blessing or gratitude. Mm -hmm. Together, we just take one slow, deep breath in, <clears throat> coming fully present in this moment, exhaling out that breath with a sigh. <sighs> Again, just thanking all the beautiful women in eco-civilization, all of the other fantastic contributors that are here today so that collectively we can truly honor and appreciate this gift of flow and water in all of our lives. May we appreciate her the way that she gifts us life. Mm -hmm. When we are ready, then we're just going to gently open our eyes. And I hand back to you, Violeta. And I pass it on to Yuka. <laughs> okay, I think. I don't have any word other than the name of the music that we're going to close this with. Thank you for uh, witnessing this beautiful piece. This is called We Are Water. And it's created by a group called Collaborations. You pray to the heavens, demand of the sky. Beg of the earth, crying silently, why? Why do they seek so much blood from a stone? What do you do when you feel so alone? Reach out when you need direction. Reach out, you'll find connection. Reach out through storm and through
when you need direction reach out you'll find connection reach out through rivers of song we are Wow, what a ending of this incredible wrap up session of the year of water. Thank you very much. And please allow me now the last few minutes to really uh, say a deep thank you to all of you. First of all, there are people who we don't see, which is our dear Eco Civilization Wing from New Zealand, Deidre, who contributed these beautiful painting backgrounds. Uh, that you were able to see and Yuko shared so well it, her contributions to the uh, to to this session. Then Yuko, a deep thank you to you, Eco Civilization Wing of Japan, your endless involvement and beautiful flow of energy. And as I say often, it is so great to follow your growth and expansion and influence and contribution at every step. Thank you very much, our teacher and guide for Eco Civilization Water, uh, Eco Civilization Wing of Myanmar, dear Nini. Uh, you shared so many thoughts already today, and I know that uh, we are on the right track for the future too, and we will continue to collaborate with you, with your incredible team in Myanmar and global water community. Uh, then, of course, Thank you very much, uh, dear Eleftheria, who came in and uh, brought these beautiful vibes of meditations. Um, you joined us in the early stages of eco-civilization as eco-civilization wing for South Africa. But since you moved to Europe, you became now ambassador of eco-civilization in Europe. And it's always a honor and pleasure to collaborate uh, with you. And last but not least, my dear friend Rajni, you are one of the early early wings of eco-civilization movement. We were paving the way uh, at the beginning, the first steps. And I'm always grateful for you, your uh, direct engagement and honesty. You used to be eco-civilization wing for India, but now uh, you moved into the co- um, curator space and uh, took over the uh, editorial capacities for eco-civilization books. And we're doing many other things together like the Year of Water. So this is a really deep thank you to all of you who were here, who shared your time, who shared your energy, not only today, but through the entire year. There were moments, ups and downs, and but uh, we always found a way forward. And of course, thank you to all of you who uh, have been invisible ambassadors uh, throughout the year today uh, and who are acting in the spirit of a better future in your local communities and gaining the strength and knowledge and wisdom to act as in the name of water and in the support of water uh, for the future of ourselves and our next generations. It's been a real pleasure hosting this. And uh, now we're gonna stop recording. And whoever has time and still has energy to stay stick around uh, for a bit uh, longer, uh, I'm inviting you to stay and we'll continue this conversation, especially about the content that uh, we will uh, focus on in the year 2024. Thank you very much.